Rube's Observations brought to you by Bradford White Water Heaters. Observation number one, let's talk about how rare it is for a team to go to a Super Bowl and then go to another one this soon, five years, six seasons difference, with a different coach and a different quarterback, and what that says about the Philadelphia Eagles franchise. The Eagles are only the third team in history to go to two Super Bowls five years apart with a different combination of coach and quarterback. The other ones, and you got to go back in history, the 76 Raiders went to the Super Bowl with John Madden as their coach, and Ken Stabler was their quarterback. And then just four years later, they went to another one with Tom Flores as the coach and Jim Plunkett as the quarterback. And then the Patriots, you remember, before Brady, before Belichick, they went, went to a Super Bowl in 96. Parcells, they lost. Parcells was the coach. And Drew Bledsoe was the quarterback. And then obviously went to nine with uh, Brady and, and, and Belichick. The first one was in 2000. And that's it. And the Eagles are only the third team to do this. And I think that really speaks volumes about a couple of things. Howie Roseman's ability to rebuild while, while still winning. Because the Eagles also went to the playoffs in 18, 19, and 21. And turn the roster over except for I don't know, seven guys, including a kicker and a holder, really three, four key guys. The only starters on that team and this team are Fletch, Kelsey, and Brandon Graham. He's not even really technically a starter now, but obviously a key piece. Isaac Sayamalo had been benched for Wisniewski by that point, and the only other guys on the team who were who were there, Greg Ward was on the practice squad. He's on the practice squad now, Jake Elliott and Rick Lovato. So it's a completely different team. And I think the biggest thing it says is that Jeff Lurie knows how to hire a coach. To to be able to hire the last two coaches he brought in have taken the team to the Super Bowl within two years of getting hired, which is crazy. But also Howie's ability, with the support from Mr. Lurie, of completely overhauling the roster from a Super Bowl team, moving on from 95% of that team, and then building another Super Bowl roster this soon with a different quarterback. You don't see this, and there's a good reason. It's really, really hard to build one Super Bowl team. And what what Howie Roseman has done is build two in a really short period of time. That's rare. And it tells you that this franchise is in a really good place, and they're not going to go away because they know how to reload while still winning. Uh, a, a more, I guess, a more micro, that's that's the macro part of the observations. A micro one is the emergence of Kenny Gainwell. This has been really interesting to me, seeing him. Now, Kenny Gainwell, during the regular season, averaged four and a half touches per game. Miles Sanders averaged just over 16. In the postseason, they're both averaging about 14 and a half. So Miles' carries have gone down, or his touches have gone down just a little bit, about two per game. And Gainwell's have more than tripled, almost quadrupled. And we've seen a tremendous level of production from Kenny Gainwell. And I don't think it's a knock on Miles, and, and we don't know. I think his knee's still not 100%. He says he's fine. He's not going to make excuses. And look, his production has been fine. He's played really well. I think this is more about Kenny Gainwell just really responding to the moment. Obviously, he had over 100 yards in the Giants game, but he was huge in that win over the 49ers. And the final numbers weren't glossy or anything. He was under four yards of carry, but he moved the sticks. He kept the clock open. There was one point they couldn't get anything going on offense. He ran down the left sideline for a 17-yard gain that kind of really jump-started the offense, and then they started really rolling with the running game. And I think Shade Steichen deserves a lot of credit for making a, a pretty significant change in the post. You don't see... A, a team kind of changed their running back rotation in the postseason. And Gainwell has been so good, they have no choice. And that's not going to stop. And I think the combination of Miles, physical runner, patient runner, 1,200 yards this year, and Gainwell slashing runner, surprisingly tough up the middle between the tackles runner, it's a tough combination to stop. Those guys are both tough, tough to stop individually. Put them together, it's kind of like the old days. You throw Boston Scott in there, it's kind of like the old three-headed monster days with Westbrook, Deuce, and Corral Buckhalter. So I give a lot of credit to the offensive coaching staff for recognizing Kenny Gainwell is more than just a role player. He's a really big piece of this offense right now, and I think he's going to be pretty big in Arizona against, uh, against the Chiefs.